Um, for those of you, bleh, for those of you who don't know me, I'm Karen Lightman. I am now the executive director of Metro 21 Smart Cities Institute. So, <laughs> uh, I've been here for a little more than four months. It's been a tremendous. I do need the back monitors on again. <laughs> They were just on. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm really honored, and it's been a great honor. Where's Rick was sitting there, but now he's gone. OK, where's Rick? There's Rick. There he is. You're just hanging out. You're ha the dogs are That's, I know. <laughs> so um, Rick Stafford and Raj, um, they've been my mentors and guide uh, through this journey. I've, I've come a long way, and it's been a, an honor and a, and a delight, actually, to work with Carnegie Mellon. And uh, today has been, I think, a great celebration of the fantastic work being done here that's been done here for 100, uh, over 100 years at Carnegie Mellon, um, and then with Smart Cities uh, here with Metro 21 since 2014. So I, um, I came here from running MEMS and Sensors Industry Group, Microelectromechanical Systems. They were talking about sensors and actuators. Those are MEMS. OK, so they forgot to say that. I was going to interrupt, but I decided I'd wait till later. <laughs> so um, yeah, all the stuff Bosch does would not exist if not for MEMS. You forgot to include that as well in your talk, but that's OK. You want to explain who makes the MEMS? Yeah, that's true. And actually, if you come to my office, you'll see a picture that was made for me by the folks at MEMS, at Bosch MEMS. So in any case, um, part of what I did when I ran conferences for MEMS Industry Group and MEMS and Sensors was I would do uh, kind of trip notes for people. I would do a summary of the day. I would capture funny quotes. And sometimes we would do it as a competition. I'm working my way into that. So eventually, you guys can be, it's, be collaborative. You can be a part of this process. But I decided I'd put together a couple of slides um, to talk about what were the key thoughts. And now the issue is I cannot read very well. Um, so <laughs> what I did is, and we'll have all of this for download for you. So if you want to you know, keep that. Uh, for you, but I, I went through everybody, and I want to thank my work studies, Bob Santa Maria and Jason Grice, who helped me pull together the key thoughts of the speakers that we had today, um, leading off with Farnham. And I, what I thought was fantastic was his message that Metro 21 is now an institute fully supported by Carnegie Mellon. And it's talking about Carnegie Mellon's expertise in connecting technology and humanity. Um, he also talked about how we're at a critical inflection point, and we have an opportunity. And this is really critical. There's so much noise about smart cities. There's so much noise. And everyone's trying to make a buck in smart cities. And I feel like Carnegie Mellon can play a role as a neutral forum for kind of getting through all the muck and the noise and bringing some sense of um, we could be neutral. We can bring some fresh, uh, this issue of a science of smart cities. So I think that was what was fantastic about what Farnham shared. Um, and so and now is the time to act is sort of his last thing. Rich Fitzgerald, um, he's such a great booster of Carnegie Mellon. So we're, and I love his stories about how far we've come as a region. And so um, what he was talking about is how now t Metro 21 is launching a new idea. Pittsburgh can be a premier city by leverage, re, la, leverage, leveraging its research and municipal resources. And that speaks to the MOU that we have, not only with the city, but also with Allegheny County. And speaking of the city, we had Karina Ricks um, here on behalf of Mayor Peduto. And um, she talked a lot about um, researching new technologies, which is important for partnership between CMU, is critical to the work they do. Um, that the city can benefit from research coming from everything from Carnegie Mellon has to offer, from material science to public policy. We have emails with the city of Pittsburgh folks almost daily, Lee. <laughs> you know, we are in touch with each other, trying like when there's flooding. You know, we're coming up with solutions. They're coming to up, uh, coming, coming to us with their problems. I think that speaks um, highly of the work that we do with our partners, and uh, currently now with the city and the county, um, and that uh, we are. Let's see. I'll just click through this, but. Um, can, well, they'll continue to transform that sort of. Grant Oliphant, there was just too much that he said. I could have, I mean, I wanted to steal his talking notes because everything he talked about was so perfect. And um, David Denks um, was uh, also really excited because he talks a lot about 
AI and society and a lot of what Grant was talking about that. So we tried to capture some of that here, that um, as a technology is not ethics neutral. It can magnify inequality and the costs are high. I think that was something that you also heard from Alexandra when she spoke. Um, we need to optimize the right things um, with ethics baked in. Um, we have resources to build a world that works for everyone, but when it's missing uh, da, 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 um, this issue of uh, abundance and equity, so we can we have an opportunity, and um, we need to make sure that we the foundation of what we do for smart cities is done and baked in at the right at the at the beginning. Um, the last part is sort of echoing that as well, is we need to build back trust in science and technology. And we can pull off this challenge. And I thought the last part that was important is that the Heinz Endowments is willing to fund it. So that's always good news, too. <laughs> so we'll continue the good work. And it looks like they're, uh, they'll continue to be a partner of ours. Um, Raj, again, lots of uh, points here. Too many on the slide, in fact. Um, and that I that the system of systems is much like a fine-tuned Swiss watch that becomes a smart watch with lots of applications. You talked about trust. We talked about that throughout the day, in fact. Trust, security, uh, privacy, all those issues are really critical. Uh, Metro 21 is a change agent. We need to work with our partners. And we talked a lot about this panel was a perfect way of talking about that. And this issue of building a science of smart cities with consideration for policy and people is really important. And then we're looking to leverage the, the uh, innovations of technology and their inter interplay. And, and like I say, is we want to do this for good. You know, We're using technology for good. Everyone is starting at a good place, so we need to make sure that we understand the implications. Um, yeah, so I'm realizing now this font is way too small for me to read, so I apologize. I'm trying to read the back. I'm used to having like a, I should actually pull up my laptop. Should I do, you know what? Maybe I'll even pull up my laptop and just read. No, it just read. You don't mind if I do? I, I guess I'm, I can because I don't have to stand there. Um, and you can read too. You can read with me. Uh, so, <laughs> but I think this was this was our this was what they call, we call it the dean's panel. But with, this was you know the deans and then Don Carter, right? There we had to, and uh, and yeah. But I think um, this idea they really came back to. It's all about people. I wanted to put this in bold, um, and that you need to be. It needs to be personalized and participating. And it needs to be focused on the use cases. We talked about workforce. I thought it was fantastic. I got, we've got two kids um, in the public school system. So I'm really impressed with the work that we're doing here at Carnegie Mellon. Um, we need a high quality education that keeps individuals um, to adapt to the rapid changes in technologies. And good education is local. And Carnegie Mellon has been doing some great work in partnering. And I love the fact that that's gonna, that is part and will continue to be a part of what we do at Metro 21. Um, we heard this again and again, this idea that we need to triumvirate, that um, it's not just the university sitting in its ivory tower, but we need all the folks who are in this room doing this with us. Um, use cases again, um, the fact that we're interdisciplinary is our secret sauce. That policy and people part is really, it's not just tech. You know, I think, was it Andrew Moore who did the <coughs> MIT thing? I mean, that's what stands us apart a lot from these um, high tech universities is because we really are focused on the policy and the people. Um, we talked about ownership of data. And then we asked them, you know, how, what should Metro 21 do in the future? Mm -hmm. And um, I thought it was important that they said, and, and we hear this too, is it's, communities are not just cities. I mean, of course, 80% of the world's population is going to be in cities by 2020. But it's also the exurbs and the suburbs around it. And we're going to be doing more work in not just metropolitan areas, but those areas as well. And then lastly, infrastructure. Obviously, as you make your way here and lose two tires to a pothole, you realize that infrastructure is a really big deal as well. Um, so Dave Roger was great. I love that I've told this story. Um, <laughs> I've only been here for four months, but I'm telling this story about Henry Hillman sitting at a stoplight looking at Carnegie Mellon <laughs> and realizing we've got, we've got to be able to do a better job here. And he gave, you know, gave us money so we could have what we have now. Um, and then 
They saw Traffic 21. We owe a lot to the great work of Chris Hendrickson and Stan Caldwell and Raj as well for the great work they've done with Traffic 21. We, we are now standing on their shoulders, and Metro 21 will, will continue that work. Um, and that I also thought it was good about how David talked about the different groups have different ways of looking at problems. And that's something that they um, want to make sure that we, and that's that interdisciplinary thing as well. Um, so this is a <laughs> full slide. Um, the, the Science of Smart Cities panel, um, what a great group of, of folks. Um, I thought it was great. It's, it's not just, you know, it's the, what's the science of smart cities? It's data science and collaboration. Um, don't look at a particular point of a city or a series of individuals in a city. Seek to extend, ex understand the city globally across space and time. Edge computing, as much like you were talking about the human body with a, or a, a nervous system, the sensing and processing. Causality, I think that was something that um, Manuela was talking a lot about, um, this inner interconnectivity that we need to be thinking about. Um, as well as cities are highly constrained to predictable systems. And you know, her, her joke about how she loves the Truman Show. I hate the Truman Show. I love life's unpredictabilities, but I also want to get to work on time, right? So I think it's that balance of, um, of, the, of that is, is something that we should be thinking about in Metro 21. Um, we also talked a little bit, a little dark, about responsibility and culpability. And we should be thinking about how um, these things need to be open and transparent. And I know that's something very core to the work that we do here in Carnegie Mellon. And, um, and I know we'll continue. Um, lastly, I, I was trying to get as much as I could out of this last panel, but I was typing and I knew I was going to present, so I hope I caught everything. But um, we, we wanted to talk about how the city of Pittsburgh evaluates opportunities from the business end, and the Port Authority needs to do what it does to be the most attractive place for transportation. And I know you've got a large job ahead of you, Catherine, but uh, <laughs> we know you can do it. Yeah, seven weeks in, is that what you said? Yeah, OK. You're doing great. Um, data infrastructure, cloud computing, and application development are the three pillars. Um, the partnerships are a way to move projects forward, but the funding models need to be adaptive to the city exploring these solutions. That's very true. Um, there are many challenges with open and iterative data infrastructure, um, analytics, and there's this issue of wireless broadband and fiber. That's something I know we're really struggling with here in Pittsburgh. That not struggling, but we know it's a challenge, and we are we are meeting it. We are we are going to meet it, and we want to take Pittsburgh to the the next level of smart cities. That infrastructure is really core to that. And then this issue of standards, where I came from in the semiconductor and MEM space, I called it my three-legged stool, which was standards, interoperability, and power. Um, so they all remain very important here, too. Um, but it was great to hear you guys talk about standards and interoperability, because we can't, if we just keep having one-offs and one-offs and one-offs, we're not going to get anywhere. Um, so then I started doing like kind of favorite quotes that um, some are, you know, most of them are, are clean, I think. Uh, <laughs> and so Grant um, had a few, make sure that we're at the epicenter of making technology work for the many, not for just the few. Um, the, I, Raj, this is so perfect for you, is the greatest idea in the world when I'll take root if it's not funded by someone. <laughs> That's my favorite. Um, and then Lori, uh, Metro 21 is taking, uh, this is, I should say, smart cities out of the lab and into the streets. Um, and then Jim, I don't know if you're still here. Yeah, this, I, maybe you don't want your name attached to this, but I love the idea of having you know, that minority report for infrastructure so that the data, the, the potholes can be predicted before they happen. Um, to produce good learning outcomes, we need to incorporate uh, local knowledge and feedback. That's Richard Chinas. And Krishnan and Jim showed me what Metro 21 was doing to address society's greatest challenges, Andrew Moore. So that's a great quote, too. Um, I think uh, equity, this issue of equity as well, Krishnan um, talked about as well. And then, um, Don, your quote is both you and uh, Shakespeare, uh, what is the city but the people? And then I figured it would be a good segue to Denmark um, that Alex is talking about. You know when Denmark is coming to you to learn about using data to improve your welfare system, child welfare <coughs> system, you're doing it right. Um, and then her other point was you need to learn from the problems, not, the, not perpetuate them. 
Um, Manuela had many quotes, but she was talking about how it's uh, the kind of the interdisciplinary component of uh, the machinery of smart cities. And then Jose, whatever we're doing with data an analysis, machine learning, or AI, it needs to improve the lives of citizens. We can't build black boxes. Um, we have more. Smart cities are interesting because they put computer science ideas into practice. Um, Kristen, we work in silos, um, but we need to cross-educate so we understand. And then Lee, um, we have to be cautious about the investments we make in the city to get the maximum benefit from tax dollars for our citizens. I thought that was a good city of Pittsburgh quote for you. Um, and then uh, Jim Young, connective tissue to power and the infrastructure, the stuff that you don't see is what you do at Crown Castle. And then again, uh, something that you, you take, you don't, com you don't tell people how great your bus ride was, right? You t and that's what you want. You don't want anyone talking about their bus rides because it shows that you're doing you know, your job well. Um, and the Port Authority and the buses are going on time. And that's gonna be a part, what a smart city is about that these things should be predictable and reliable and no one thinks about them. Um, and then this is really important. Richard, where are you sitting? Is he still here, Richard? Riazzi? Um, regulatory. The regulatory component is so important. And I think that's, I'm really glad that this panel brought it up. And then Frank, you got the last word, um, which was our goal is to improve the quality of life for citizens and communities in which we work. So extremely noble work. So um, I pulled out Raja's summary slide from when he started, because I think it echoes and um, it still continues here as an important point of what we aim to do at Metro 21. Um, and, and I won't read that to you because you've heard it before, but this is core. This is our future. This is what we're going forward. And we, we basically, we want you to, to come with us on this journey. And we're looking forward to partnering with many of you, if not all of you, on our next step. Um, and then lastly, I just threw the slide in here. Um, I've been getting a lot of thank yous and congratulations from everybody, but I am really grateful to the hard work of the folks uh, who are many of not in this room because they're doing the work for the next stage. Um, but I want to thank my work studies, Bob and Jason. Obviously, I want to thank Raj and uh, Rick Stafford and Stan. Are you still in the back or he's heading? He's, oh, you are, good. Okay, so Stan Caldwell. Um, as well, um, extremely grateful. And then we also have um, the team from CMU Marketing, and we've got some other um, folks like Natasha and Chelsea and um, Steve and Katie. Um, so thank you for making this a great event, and thank you for all of you for your participation. And I think the last two people I want to thank are Jim and Krishnan, um, because we came to you with this idea for today. And you said, go for it. And look what we did. So thank you. And uh, <laughs> nicely done. Any last words? I do have some closing, closing thoughts. Uh, is it on? Um, so I guess I just want to, I guess, uh, talk a, a little bit about uh, next steps, if you will, uh, just to highlight what uh, uh, Karen just said. Uh, unique aspects of what we're trying to do, interdisciplinary in nature, right? And then deployments in the real world to solve real world problems, right? And then meanwhile, uh, we want to take a scientific approach which enables fundamentally new ways of thinking about things, fundamentally uh, new ways of uh, solving problems. And then as Jim pointed out, uh, there are engineering ways of doing it as well by trial and error. So basically, and then from engineering comes science, from science you run engineering experiments and so on. So they turn out to be very complementary. So with that uh, as, as the context, what, what do we plan to do next? I guess we have a bunch of uh, industry representatives out, out here and then a public uh, entity representatives out here. Uh, we would like to basically engage you very actively, pr very proactively. We see kind of two models of uh, cooperation going forward. The first could possibly be a, a three-way relationship between a company, Metro 21, and a public entity, right? where we basically do a, a three-way effort of some kind, uh, taking some uh, products, components, systems that the company has to provide, uh, adding some uh, creativity, some innovation from the CMU side, and combining the two, and then working with uh, a public entity to actually deploy that solution in the real world. Get some, so that's one model. A second model would be uh, where the company works with basically with CMU, with Metro 21 directly, 
right? And we basically come up with uh, some good ideas, explore some new fr frontiers, right? And then meanwhile, uh, the uh, Institute, Metro 21 Institute, will continue to work with uh, the city, uh, various municipalities, the county, and then beyond, uh, working with the Metro Lab Network and so on. So very basically, I guess there are uh, a two two-way relationships going on, right? Uh, so what we expect to uh, put in place now that we are actually a formal uh, institute, uh, now that the uh, deans have blessed it, uh, the interim president has blessed it, the provost was, er was year earlier, and uh, multiple deans uh, uh, actually provided very insightful comments. What we expect to see happen is that uh, in the near future, uh, we, put, we expect to put in place uh, a framework, a, structure, uh, a, a structured way of uh, companies to work with us. Uh, basically, we expect to define uh, different tiers, if you will, uh, uh, with annual uh, dues and such, uh, and each tier actually uh, getting different kinds of benefits. And then, there actually, I guess, uh, at the higher tiers, if you will, uh, there will be uh, options where uh, you will be able to define a custom project uh, that you are interested in, so that actually we could work with you exclusively on. You would, act, you would have access to uh, some of the greatest minds on campus, some of uh, which were on display earlier uh, this afternoon on the uh, faculty panel and then access to uh, some of the students, right? So I guess that was mentioned earlier, one of the biggest assets on campus are really the students that we have. Uh, so basically you'll have access to that. But we'll put this uh, framework uh, very formally in front of you. Uh, let me just finally add that uh, as a founding member of this uh, partnership framework, you will have uh, more privileges, if you will, more benefits than those who come later. Right. So, so keep that in mind. So, so meanwhile, uh, so I guess uh, let me just uh, th thank a few people uh, on my front. I guess first of all, I guess uh, 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 Jim and Krishnan. I guess uh, uh, thanks to you uh, for all the uh, uh, pioneering vision that has lasted several years. Rick Stafford, my partner in uh, crime, and then uh, without him, uh, lots of things would not have happened. Uh, I guess uh, then meanwhile, uh, Karen, you saw the the energy, the passion uh, coming forth, right? Um, great person to basically uh, uh, launch this uh, industry partnership, if you will. Uh, keep in touch, uh, I'm available, as are the deans, uh, and uh, Karen, uh, Rick, Stan, uh, Chris Hendrickson out here. Right? So uh, multiple points of contact here. Uh, contact anybody, everybody you are, you are comfortable with, and let's basically change cities for the better, right? So again, thank you for coming. We'll actually have, I guess before we go on, I guess we're going to introduce the next poster, poster session, are we? Rick, I'm looking at you. Ah, uh, yeah, yes. So, <laughs> so, so, I, so I guess, so, so Rick, you're not, you're not prepped. So I guess I'll say that. So, uh, the most important. Uh, so I guess uh, it is Friday afternoon. We understand that, we appreciate that. Uh, so we will actually have uh, beer and chips and pretzels and then the like. Uh, if you want more sugar, there will be more sugar. Uh, pizza, Ooh. right, so uh, cheese. Uh, so I guess we'll actually have a poster session uh, showcasing some of the projects that are ongoing, uh, uh, students uh, uh, talking, bragging about what they have accomplished, uh, probe them, uh, needle them, and meanwhile uh, have some uh, munchies, uh, and then have a good rest of the weekend. Okay? We look forward to it.